We've travelled to Ardley Studios to talk to Keith Myrams. Keith, there are three pieces of work that you're doing. What are they? Well, um, th these are three landscapes which are apparently to go into an uh, enclosed waiting area at Clacton. I haven't actually seen the, thing, the, the building itself. But um, the idea was that, you know, this would give somebody, the people sitting there, something interesting to look at while they're sitting there. And uh, the, the idea came from the client, that, you know, they would like Trump oil window frames. Um, from there, they then asked me to sort of think about this, and I did sort of four suggestions. And, you know, they are sort of the... I, I took the River Stur, um, mainly because it's local and obviously because it's picturesque. Um, this one is the Dedham Vale, which is um, the, sort of the highest up the river I went. Uh, with it, and in fact, I've taken a bit of licence. I've moved Dedham Church to one side, but hopefully nobody will go and look at the scene. Um, so then I did this one. And then the second one, which um, is a view from Mistley looking out across Ravness, and the river there, I believe, is supposed to be three miles wide out toward Holbrook. And that's the one I'm yet to finish. And the last one is the, of Harwich Harbour. And that is a view which goes from Parkston Quay right the way round to Felixstowe. That one also I've taken a licence because you'd have to have very wide eyes to see this in one view. Um, and so, you know, the, it, um, they're all sunny. They're all rather colourful. They've all been done um, from the point of view of uh, people looking at them and hopefully feeling better for looking at them, uh, and not really from my point of view as an artist. And this probably comes from the fact that um, professionally I'm a publicity designer, and so I'm used to actually solving problems which are supposed to influence other people and not necessarily be expressing my own preferences. And so each of these pictures are really done from that point of view. Uh, perhaps if you'd asked me to do just a, a landscape and painting in a way I would have liked, they wouldn't have come out quite like this. They wouldn't have been quite so sunny and blue skies and optimistic, or hopefully optimistic. Well, on, on, on the uh, different um, pieces of work, not only have you used licence, but there's an awful lot of detail, isn't there? Well, again, that, I think... Um, I mean, I may be proved wrong, but, you know, these people might be sitting there for some time. And uh, generally, I think it's a more uh, sort of popular taste to, to see things with a lot of detail in them. You know, th this is something that people admire. You know, they, th th there's a, an appreciation of drawing probably more than there is of the actual manipulation of colour or paint or tone, which is more the sort of thing that painters are concerned with. Uh, and so, I uh, quite intentionally, I mean, on this one, you know, I've put cows in and sort of little indication of sheep and there'll be some um, swans on the water. But, I mean, it's, you know, it's a romantic image. I mean, it actually happened because in the photograph that I took some years ago that I'm working from here, um, in reality, I mean, <laughs> they were there, but I've obviously used them, I've changed the emphasis, I've changed the colour, but I, I'm, I'm, I believe it's the sort of things that people enjoy doing. I think, you know, when you look at the Harwich picture, I can well imagine that, you know, parents would keep the children quiet by saying, you know, count how many boats there are, or, uh, you know, pointing out that, do you remember we saw a light ship or something? And so, therefore, you, you know, that's why I've gone for, you know, a fair amount of realism. What's the skill, then, um, Keith, of getting so much into a small area? Well, um, it's always difficult because you don't really know how you do things. Um, you know, I, I must admit, when I you know, was first asked to do this, uh, and I did the small roughs, and then this was fairly easy because I was working from that sort of scale. Um, and I, it was the sort of scale I was familiar with. When I actually then ordered the boards, and they were two metres, the big one's two metres by a metre, and these are a metre and a half by a metre, uh, I, I panicked because I looked at this great thing and I thought, God, you know, how can I actually control just the point you're making, not to make it fiddly, and yet 
cover such a big uh, big area and make a, uh, a reasonable picture. Um, it, it's it's not easy. Hopefully, I've done it. it you know, it's um, it's to some extent uncharted ground for me because I would normally treat a panel this big in a much broader way. I would not get involved in sort of painting the. Um, you know, the hair on the nose of the cattle sort of thing, whereas, you know, I thought it might be appropriate in this case. Mm. Well, you're doing far more than just the artist work, aren't you? You're building window frames as well. Well, th th this it was because because they want this trompe d'oil effect. Um, and I thought, well, these panels, you know, they will need to be framed. And then it occurred to me, and I suppose it was a bit of a conceit, that, you know, you thought, now, wouldn't it be fun to actually make the frame actually like a genuine window frame and uh, so I, you know I bought the timber and then a friend cut this OG moulding on it and rebated it and then you know I've actually made the windows up with um, doing mortise and tenon joints in a way that you would if you were making a window frame and but of course it then led me into all sorts of problems in the sense that the frame itself is real and that real real depth and, and uh, dimension. Uh, I knew to get the idea that you were looking from inside the room to look out, then you would go from a dark grey on the outside of the frame uh, across the moulding, which in fact I've cheated a bit, but the moulding really ought to have a, dark, a shadow on the inside of it and then get lighter on as it comes towards you because that's where the light would fall, and then a light grey into the as you go into the moulding. Um, but then, of course, when you come to the window furniture, then, you know, the thing like that. Now, um, that has got to be painted on the window, so it, it's convincing, but it's going to be partly on the window and partly looking down onto that. Um, and the same thing applies with the catches, although the catches, because they will only be on the painting, are easier. They're slightly more difficult on the Harridge picture, which has got, mo uh, got moulding running down the middle of it. So, uh, but that's uh, the, the, you know, the, it's just uh, it's a bit of fun, really. It's you know, it's the sort of things you know. I'm questioning even with this, you know, whether I paint a ladybird on it or a, a butterfly on the inside of the glass. You know, just, you know, you get carried away with it. Well, you're midway through it. You're mm -hmm. sort of um, one and a half up. And yes, it's three. <laughs> How long has it taken so far? Well, uh, I suppose the Harridge one. I was on that. That's been about a week and a half, I suppose. Um, the background doesn't take that long, you know, because you're working... It, it, one of the problems you're working with acrylics, I, I generally speaking, paint with oil paint, but because of the size of these things and where they're going, um, it was suggest, you know, acrylic makes more sense because they will dry off, well, they dry off instantly. And that was the point I was going to make, is that acrylic paint, you've got to work quickly because it just is going off all the time. And, you know, you get a lot of dry effects with it because you know irritatingly you put a bit too much paint out and then uh, you know you, you concentrate on something else and then if you're not careful the brush has gone hard and the paint has dried and, uh, and you're stuck with it so you know you've got to work fairly quickly um, I think probably it's the sort of thing that um, with any painting you know that uh, Whistler was questioned and said you know that uh, he was charging too much because of the time that he took to do it, and he said, "You know, well, it's a, it might be sort of an hour's work, but it's a lifetime's experience." And this is sort of, you know, and then you fall back on that. You just fall back on technique, you know, to, um, to put the thing together quickly. The last piece of uh, work he did on the Harwich yes. scene was the seagulls, wasn't it? Oh, the, the final thing the that final I put on. Thing, yeah. yeah. Did he have any problems of wanting to? sort of step out into nothingness. Well, it, 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 it was, it, it's funny really because they weren't, I hadn't planned to put seagulls on there um, and you know all the illusion was coming from perspective on top of the boats and also the, risk, the, the depth was from tone, you know you started from the light in the background and coming forward into, and also you then increase the degree of um, detail in the water so that it, it came forward and when I'd virtually finished it and I'd finished the frame ramp and everything else and I thought I don't know it'd be nice to put seagulls on but as I was painting them on I actually 
it sort of fooled myself in the sense that, you know, once I put the thing on, I actually felt I could fall out the window, which was, you know, stupid. I mean, you know, you begin to sort of start thinking it's really getting to you. <laughs> well, that's how real it all is. <laughs> when are these got to be finished by? Uh, well, they've got to actually be up in Clacton on the 20th of June. Uh, well, I think it opens uh, that weekend, you know, so I've got to get them down there and mounted on the walls, you know, by then. But uh, the, the Harwich one's going to be in Colchester, you know, on an exhibition until then, um, with the rest of the hospital art commissions. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to do. <laughs> I don't know if I want to keep on doing them. But. This is a, a hideaway studio, isn't it? Miles away from everywhere. Where where are we at the moment? Um, Lexton. 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 Yes. Let, let me just look at what you're doing. This is a rough idea of what what you're going to produce for what Clacton Hospital. Yes. Yes. In the children's eye unit, I think it's going in um, one of the treatment rooms. Let's take minds their minds off it. So what exactly is it? Right. They wanted a. Um, a picture which would do something other than just be a picture. So it's going to be a spot the difference. This is very basic. I don't know if you can imagine, but then that would be, you know, there'll be different things like, um, you know, different coloured anchor, different shapes on the fish, different coloured boat, just lots of different things. So when you first see it, it will look like two boats and some fish and all the rest of it. And then if you look harder, other things will pop out, hopefully. But it's not a painting. It's not a... Not, not as such, no. It's, you know, it's um, sort of more lumpy and bumpy and more... It will be painted, but it's not a painting like a painting, no. So it's a 3D? More, um, you know, just raised and um, not quite 3D, but yes, it is. It's, it will be texture, it, you know, tactile. It, people, I think people want to touch my things because they, they do... They are raised. Yeah. What process then have you been using to put this together? Right, this, normally I don't do things on plywood. Um, I have done large things before, but they've had mirror in the middle. Um, but I got plywood here, 9 mil ply, um, but that still was too flexible. So I've had to have battens screwed on the back, so it's now very, very stiff. It's not going to move, that's it. Um, and then once I got the plywood board cut, I then drew out my plan. Um, and then yesterday made many, many buckets um, of what I call sculpture mould, because that's what I used to use in Australia, but I can't get hold of it now. And so I've made my own, which is just basically torn up newspaper and a lot of um, filler and mix it up. And it's very messy, and that's the bit I don't like, and that's done now. So it's, down, it's uphill from here, or downhill from here, should I say. In the words of Blue Peter, here's one you made earlier. What is in this? That, that in there, this is the wallpaper paste, but also in there is, um, I'm very fussy about which wallpaper paste I use now, you get used to, um, wallpaper paste and PVA to make it stronger. It's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> and have you chosen one particular national newspaper because the quality of the paper is best? You do choose newspapers, yes. Um, fortunately for this, if, if something's, all the tabloids... They're a lot softer. The papers are a lot softer and they absorb um, water a lot quicker and go very, very pliable. Sometimes they're too soft. Actually, some of the local papers are very soft, but the tabloid papers are quite good for when I'm doing other things. But because this is quite firm, um, I'm finding that the, you know, the big newspapers are actually quite good on this. So, yes, I do pick my newspapers. What's the time scale of it all, Rebecca? When have you got to get it completed by? Um, I think it's somewhere around the 15th, 16th of June, so not long. But the, you know, the net, the longer stage now will be waiting for the so many layers of paper that I'll put on this, waiting for this to start to dry because I want it to dry absolutely properly um, before I start painting it. Otherwise, the paint goes funny and stuff like that if you hurry it. Um, um, and then what takes long at the end is I hand paint with black ink around all the colours, so, and that takes a long time and it's awful if you've got a shaky hand, so. 
Are you putting in some hours then, day and night? Um, I do work, I, yes, because I work by myself, you can work any hours you want, can't you? And yes, if I'm on a roll, I won't go home just because it's five o'clock. You keep going if you're on something, so, yeah. But um, I think the hardest part was really um, designing it and getting it to this stage. Um, now, now it's at this stage. It's easy for me to do from here. It's nice. I enjoy this bit. This is nice. In an exhibition at the Minories and Trinity Street Studios, Rebecca's work joins that of other artists involved with the projects. Sandra Francis, tell me about your commission. What are you doing? Uh, I've been commissioned to produce a textile piece for the counselling room at Acton, um, and I've started it very recently, so it's sort of frantic work at the moment. Yeah. What process are you using then? Uh, I'm making sheets of latex from repeating leaf shapes. So I make a plaster mould first and then big sheets of latex, which are then coloured with sort of gold and turquoise pigments and stitched into. And it'll be quite a large piece. I think it's about a metre by a metre and a half. And where's it going to go in the hospital? It's going in the counselling room. So, yeah. Have you had to look at some specific colours to, to go in with yeah. the existing environment? Yeah, well, very much so, and I'm trying to produce something that's fairly subtle and gentle and colours from nature, really, yeah. So it's all inspired by the landscape around me. So what have you chosen, then? What, colour, colour, colour similar to this, actually, is turquoise, gold, pale yellow, um, and my work's all about the cycle of the seasons and sort of trying to produce something that's quite hopeful and, you know, looking to nature as a source of inspiration. And are you working to a deadline? Very much so, yeah. As I say, it's frantic at the moment. It's got to be installed, I think, by uh, the 21st of June, which is my birthday. <laughs> so it's, like, all, all happening, yeah, very busy. But it's great. I'm really enjoying it. Well, Rose Rands, you are not from this part of the world, are you? Oh, no, we're from Cambridge. I live right in the middle of Cambridge, actually, and I'm the artist director at King's College. I look after their studios, and I'm a visiting lecturer at Anglia. So it's quite interesting. I'm doing my own work as well, quite busy. Tell me about your commission. What were you asked to do by Steve Downing? Oh, well, I had an exhibition at Braintree at the museum last year, and Steve wrote to me and asked me if I'd be interested in being part of the Clacton Outpatients, our commission, and I said yes, because it fulfills the brief of my work, because the work's really about creating a sort of, well, less stressful area in the 1990s. So when people go to my exhibition, they normally go back several times because they feel no pressure on them. So it fitted my bill for the work, really, being commissioned for a hospital. <laughs> so I was quite pleased. And uh, they're all handmade papers and stitched. And they take a long time um, to complete. So I've really had a very, very short sort of space of time. And it's the biggest piece of work I've ever done got two pieces um, to do. Now, I've nearly completed one of them, and I've just got to kind of get on and do the other one. So, 
and the people at the hospital liked it so much, the proposition, that they're going to have another piece as well. So we asked consultant artist Steve Downey, how is the project going? With the Elmster topic, we're, we're virtually in its completion. Uh, within the next about four to five weeks, most of the works will be up at Elmster. And so this exhibition is really showing a sort of um, yeah, snapshot of it sort of half completed. I'm really looking forward to seeing the staff actually in the hospital and getting the reactions of the uh, patients and the staff. I think it's looking really good. Is Clacton next? Uh, yeah, and get very shortly after, actually. I mean, uh, we're hoping that it will all be up by the 22nd of June, which is going to be the open day for Clacton. And um, the hospital will be open to the public. And we hope, really, fingers crossed, that all the works will be ready and installed by then. And the outpatients opens a week after that. What's the final part of the project then after Clacton? Well, next really is coming along quite swiftly is the um, obstetrics, gynaecology and surgical block at Colchester General Hospital in Turner Road. And uh, we've just um, advertised nationally for um, artists to send in, you know, to get interest about this project. And I've been absolutely swamped. I've had about 400 applications so far. So there's no lack of interest out there by artists. And I think we're going to get some really good work there too. <laughs> And so the great moment arrives. Finishing touches put to each piece and the Clacton Hospital heralds its open day to put on show works of art in the new Outpatients Building. Yes. 